In this lesson, we'll cover how to open and close a drawer based on a name drought and whether or not it is activated. Then we'll move on to add a fab button so that we can start adding our own books to the list. We'll hide and show this fab button based on the current route. If you've been following along with the lessons, you may have noticed that the drawer hiding was already built in. I'll review how I did this. So if you look at the left hand side here, whenever we enter a list or an edit view, the drawer collapses and moves away. And anytime that we are in the detail section, it shows up again. The material drawer has a property called opened. We'll pass that a behavior subject that has true or false in it and whether or not to show that the drawer is opened. We'll then use the router outlets to output properties, activate and deactivate so that we know whether or not the named outlet book drawer is actually being used. Inside of the book components TypeScript file, we will include the new observable that we added to our HTML so that we know whether or not the book drawer is open or closed. This is based on a RxJS behavior subject so that it has a default value that we can update anytime we see the active or non-active drawer. In the output, it will trigger on books drawer active and on books drawer deactive, and we can send that behavior subject its next value by passing next true or next false, whether or not we want the drawer opened or closed. In the next section, we're going to add a fab button for our entire book section area. The fab button should only show up once we're looking at the books list and all the other views that we route to, whether it's the detail view, the edit view, the new view, which is actually the edit view, just kind of a route in a different way. We shouldn't show those. It's only on the list view when we go back to it that it will appear and that's how we want it. In order to start using the fab button, we need to include the material icon module as well as the material button module. Now, as this will show a button on the screen somewhere, we really want to position it specifically in most material designs, the fab button is in the bottom right, or if you're right to left, it'll be in the bottom left corner. So we'll place that one rem away from the right bottom corner. And in our larger media types, we can space that out a little further and add that two rems from the bottom right. Now that we have the button module and the icon module imported, we can add the button with a icon in it for add. I wanna talk for a minute just about the different attributes that we see here. Matte Fab is going to give the styling of that round button. The color will be our accent color, which is pink in this case, or it can switch anytime the default theme switches. The class is how we are positioning it. The router link is how we will send the router once this button is clicked, or trigger the router rather. The reason that we add ARIA label is that individuals with visual impairments can use different tools to assist them in navigating pages once this is filled out. Now that we have the button set, we're gonna add a icon to it and have that icon be the add. So we just need to put add within the HTML. Whenever I'm using subscribables that I can't take once or just tap and use, I always implement the on destroy med method. You might find this pattern useful as you can add a sub array which is just an array of subscriptions. And anytime you need a subscription, you can add it to this array. That way in your on destroy method, you can unsubscribe from any of the subscribed events. So here you'll notice that we are subscribing to the router events. We'll make sure it's an instance of navigation end, and then we'll check the URL after all of the redire redirects have finished for slash books. And that way we know we can show the fab button only on the slash books path. The way that our fab button is going to be updated is by our behavior subject being true or false. So once we find that the path is set up correctly, we will send a true in the stream. If it's not, we will send false. This will easily allow us to set up an NGF on the button directly, just checking for the observable asynchronously. If you're new to RxJS and Angular, you can use the pipe async to subscribe to the behavior subject that we have. And anytime it emits a value, it will be checked against the ngif. 
To complete the full thought here, we'll just update our book's routing to include a new path that will lazy load the edit module. And because we currently have it set up so that when we pass the parameter back, it will be undefined, we actually want to redirect that back to our list so we can hit cancel within our edit form. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that watching Ajahn P's videos and adding Angular with Angular Material together, it will give you your own superpowers.